Hello and welcome to Kildalton Agricultural College. My name is Eva Hayes. Good productive soils are the foundation for any farming system and are key to growing successful, high quality crops of grassland. Therefore, the primary objective of every farmer is to maintain good soil fertility. To identify our soil fertility, we must first do a soil test to identify our pH or our lime status, our potassium or K, and our phosphorus or P. In a recent soil test conducted by Chagas, it indicated that the majority of Irish soils are suboptimal in terms of pH, P's and K's. This is leading to a reduction in output and a loss of profit for farmers. Today, along with my colleague Brian, we're going to go through the five steps to improving soil fertility on farm and good management of soil fertility. A correctly taken soil sample is key to getting a picture of your pH, your P and K lime status on your farm. A soil sample for the whole farm should be taken every three to five years and the soil sample area should be no bigger than four hectares. The approximate cost of a soil sample is 25 euro. When you divide this over the five years that you can use the soil test results and divide it by the four hectares of the soil sample, it works out at 125 per soil sample per hectare per year, which is a relatively small investment for the information that you'll obtain. When taking a soil sample, it's important to leave three months between the last application of organic fertilizer or chemical fertilizer before taking your soil sample. When taking a soil sample, we want a good representative area. We want to avoid any areas of inconsistencies, such as gateways, poached areas, dung and urine patches, and around water chocks. It's a good idea to follow the W formation when taking a soil sample. We want to take a minimum of 20 cores in order to fill the box. So we recommend taking five drops on each leg of the W pattern. When we've taken our soil samples, we'll fill them into a box. We will write the name of the paddock on the front of the box, making sure that the farmer knows these paddocks. It's a good idea to write the field name as well, such as hill field or low field, so the farmer recognises when the soil samples come back. So when taking your soil cores, you make sure that you have a full 20 cores in order to fill the box. It takes approximately 15 cores to fill the box. So you take a random sample of those 15 cores. When using the soil core, it's important that we take our soil samples to the depth of 10 centimetres or 4 inches to ensure we're getting a good soil core that will be able to be analysed in the lab. This is especially important for your phosphorus levels. The pH plays a major role in soil fertility and it's often considered the major or master variable as it unlocks and locks up different elements within the soil. Having the correct pH for mineral soils at 6.3 to 6.5 is very important. It increases the microbial activity within our soils and has, increases our earthworm count. It also helps the release of nutrients from our chemical and our organic fertilizer and it's important for the recycling of nutrients. We should spread lime in line with our soil test results. There's two options of lime available for us to spread on the land. We have ground lime or granulated lime. Our ground lime is a relatively inexpensive fertilizer. It costs about 25 euro a ton. It's made up of small particles from dust right up to about 3.35 millimeters. It takes about two years to be incorporated into the soil, but can last up to five or six years in the soil. Our other option is our granulated lime. This is made up of fine dust of quarry lime. It's incorporated very quickly into the soil, but only lasts about one grazing season. This type of granulated lime is more expensive and can cost about 160 euro per tonne. Here we have two samples of grass. We have a pH of 5.7 and a pH of ideal of 6.4. We can see in the pH of 5.7, we have less vigor and less productivity. We can also see there's more incidences of weeds and we can see some moss, which is an indicator of a low pH. On the good um, soil pH of 6.4, we can see we have good vigor and good growth and productivity from our soil. We can also see we have good root development and when I was digging up this sample earlier I saw loads of worms. 
Slurry is a valuable resource when used correctly by targeting paddocks that need it most and spreading it in the right conditions to minimise losses into the atmosphere by volatilisation and runoff into water bodies. We want to target to spread our slurry in the springtime. Um, we want to target our low index paddocks for low for P and Ks, which we would have those results from our soil test. It's also important to incorporate slurry into our silage ground. If we follow the nutrient cycle from our silage ground, it ends up from our silage into the silage pit. It's fed to cows and that is returned in slurry. So it's very important that we return that slurry onto our silage ground to complete the nutrient cycle. We want to target to spread um, in the springtime on a cool, moist day. We want to make use of our low emission slurry spreading systems, such as our injection and our trailing shoe. Before spreading slurry, it's important that we check the dry matter content, as this will have an impact on the nutrients provided in that slurry. Here we have two samples of slurry. We have a very thick slurry at about 8% dry matter, and we have a watery slurry at about 4% dry matter. We're using a slurry hydrometer to check the dry matter of those slurries to ensure that we're providing the correct nutrients for the crop. Hello, Brian Clancy, Chagas Kildalton College. Uh, today I want to speak to you about the soil index system and I also want to speak to you about Liebig's law of the minimum. So in relation to the soil index system, as my colleague Eva has alluded to earlier on, soil fertility is extremely important for all grassland paddocks. So, the soil index system is on a scale of 1 is to 4, 1 and 2 being uh, very, very deficient or low in P and K, so P is your phosphorus and K is your potassium values in grassland paddocks. So if you have soil index for P and K at index 1 or 2, it means that uh, those soils are deficient in those essential elements, phosphorus and potassium. So the target you want to be at is soil index 3, so that's the, the ideal target you want to be at. And if you have soil index 4, it basically means that you have luxury amounts or excess amounts of P and K in your soil. So why is all this very, very important? Um, phosphorus is a critical element as regards uh, tillering, root development and growth. And it's very, very important, I suppose, to kickstart spring growth as well. Uh, your potash or your potassium uh, is very, very important for um, uh, stem structure and development and it's also very very important um, to prevent lodging and this is extremely important in a crop such as cereal crop, wheat barley or oats or a silage crop. So if you look at the examples here on the left, um, this uh, grass sample here, it basically shows soil index 1 for P and K so that basically means that uh, that soil is deficient in those essential elements P and K. If you look at the one on my right here, it's basically um, soil index 3, which is the target one, it's the ideal one you want to be at, and it shows that you've got good structure of your roots, um, and you also have um, a good dense mat or a good sward of grass as well. So that's where you want to be. So um, I suppose as regards trying to uh, control this or, or top it up, um, the first thing to do is target slurry to your lower index fields, P and K, 1 and 2. Um, so go there with your slurry first, that's critical. And then if you need to top up, you can go with um, a chemical fertilizer such as 18612 here on my right. Um, and that's a fairly balanced fertilizer from the point of view of uh, N, P and K. So I just want to speak to you a minute um, in relation to nutrient balancing. So it's a bit like our own bodies um, as regard to balanced diet. So in relation to the grass sample here on the my right, this is a target of index one, which means it's particularly low for P and K. So that's where you don't want to be. So in order to try and um, correct that, you could use a product such as maybe 18612. It's a compound fertilizer and it's an equal balance of all nutrients um, in the form of nitrogen, phosphorus and pot potassium. If you're at index three here on my right, um, it's an ideal target for where you should be. So again, that's just a, as a, um, that's just a matter of keeping it maintained um, and, and watching that it doesn't drop back to index one or two. I just want to speak to you a minute in relation to um, the barrel here in front of me. So it's uh, based on a famous German scientist, um, Justus von Lieberg. Um, so basically what the barrel represents is these are the um, major and minor nutrients in soil. Um, and the water then represents your crop yield. So I'll just demonstrate, I suppose, what happens. Um, if we say nitrogen is um, in short supply, it doesn't make a difference what other level of nutrients you have in your soil, um, it, it, it's going to have a, a negative effect on your crop. So 
just by demonstrating here with the, with the bucket, um, you'll see that as I pour in, so in this situation, nitrogen now is the limiting factor because it's in the shortest supply. So it just demonstrates, I suppose, that um, you need to have equal levels of both uh, major and minor nutrients in your soil to have uh, correct uh, crop yield and uh, crop growth. So I just want to summarise the five uh, important steps in relation to soil fertility management. So the first step is very, very important, I suppose, to take um, a soil analysis for the whole farm. That's critical, that's your first or your basic step. The second step is to make sure that your soil pH is at the correct target levels of 6.3 to 6.5. So by uh, using either granulated lime or powder limestone, uh, it would be very, very important to try and correct your pH. The third step would be your P's and K's. So that would be very, very important to have your P or your phosphorus at index three and your K also at index three. Um, and obviously if you're at index four, it's, you've got excess or luxury amounts of P and K in your soil. So utilize that to your advantage. If you're at index one and two, well then you need to address that situation by uh, first incorporating slurry. Um, it's a valuable resource that you have in your farm. So use that to your advantage first and then balance it with um, a compound fertilizer such as maybe 18, 6, 12 or one other blend. Um, so in relation to uh, nutrient inputs, it's very, very important, I suppose, to have a balanced supply of nutrients um, for your crop, be it grassland or cereal production. Um, and that's going to be going back to the original step of having a soil analysis um, uh, for, for the whole farm.